is it's a place where we can, as we know, hold tension quite easily. So as you let your head roll a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left, noticing how that whole part of yourself feels, the back of your neck, the base of your skull, the back of your shoulders, the tops of your shoulders, the whole of your shoulders. And just a couple more times in a very sort of easy, lazy way, let your head roll to the right and to the left. And then finding a comfortable place to settle the center of the back of your head on the floor. And if it feels that it would be helpful for you to gently pick up your head in your hands. So interlinking your fingers around the back of your head, you can massage this with your thumbs into the base of your skull as you lift your head up. And you're lengthening out the back of your neck, but you're not sort of pulling on your head or sort of overdoing it. Maybe just creating a little bit of space there. And then placing your head back onto the floor. And now if your legs are long, I'd like you to bend your knees and stand your feet on the floor. That's it, Sharon. And then just start to let your knees tilt to the right and to the left. And seeing how this feels. So how does it feel into your hip joints? How does it feel across the back of your pelvis? This feeling of the weight shifting to the right side of your pelvis, to the left side of your pelvis. How does it feel into your lower back? And obviously there may be other sensations as well, other parts of your body, good. So just a couple more times to the right and to the left. <laughs> And then what you're going to do is pause in the center and you're going to cross your arms over your chests. So you've got, so you've got one arm on top. And then what I'd like you to do now is come to those movements where you're rocking from side to side across the back of your body. So you're letting your knees, your elbows and your head all move in the same direction. Oh yes, that's it Rosie, with your knees bent and your feet standing on the floor. So you can, just very much come to this movement where if we've got our elbows crossed over our chest, we can let the elbows, the knees and the head all rock over towards the right and then all over towards the left. That's it, Sarah, good. So just a bit of, it, I suppose, rolling from side to side across the back of your body. It doesn't have to be a huge movement, but if it feels nice to make it a larger movement, you can do that. And having as our intention, this just sense of easing out. So as we rock from side to side, can we sort of be easing out tightness across the back of ourselves? Perhaps pause in the center and change the cross of your arms and see how it feels to rock with the other arm on top. So Mel, we're rocking from side to side. So we've got our knees bent, our elbows crossed over our chest, rocking from side to side. And just do that a couple more times and then settle in the center, uncross your arms and keep your knees bent. And you might find from the rocking that your feet have moved away from your pelvis. So you might just want to pay attention to settling your feet on the floor again. And a couple of times come back to letting your knees only tilt to the right and to the left. And I just what I'd like you to feel here is how the weight shifts side to side across the back of your pelvis because then you're going to settle in the center and you're going to start to tilt your pelvis on the floor. So you're tipping your pelvis towards your face and away from your face. So we get that feeling in the lower back of the lower back flattening out when we tip the pelvis towards our face and then the lower back arching a little bit off the floor when we tip the pelvis away from our face. And you're shifting the weight, the contact of your pelvis on the floor. So as you tip your pelvis away from your face, it's the bottom of your pelvis that's contacting the ground. As you tip your pelvis towards your face, it's the top edge of your pelvis that's in contact with the ground. 
So if I'm tilting your pelvis like this, I'd like you then to allow yourself to come on into two or three really easy bridge poses. So I think it's usually from when we tip the pelvis towards the head, that if we make that movement a bit bigger, then the spine starts to come away. The whole of the pelvis comes off the ground and then the spine starts to peel up. And we can just in a very sort of easy, um, non-pushy way, we can roll up and down through two or three bridge poses. And as you do so, again, using this to help you with a sense of how does your spine feel? How easy or difficult is it to particularly that sort of placing down of your vertebrae one by one? You know, does, is, is there this feeling of the spine having different vertebrae or does, do you feel stiff and does your spine all feel like it's, it's a sort of solid piece? Okay. So if you're, that's it. When you, when your pelvis comes back down from the bridge pose that you're on, maybe briefly fold your knees into your chest. We're going to do a little bit more bridge, but we're going to be alternating it with, um, well, we're going to do our little mini sit-ups. So fold your knees into your chest for a moment and then let's just do two or three little mini sit-ups to remind ourselves of um, how they feel. So bring your feet back onto the floor, bring your hands around the back of your head and interlink your fingers. So what you're going to do is as you exhale, breathing through your nose, you're going to lift your head, gather your elbows in, look between your legs, Come up into your little mini sit up, try and tilt your pelvis as you do so. That's it, so you're pressing the middle of your back onto the floor. And repeat this two or three times. So we're thinking more about this pressing of the middle of the back onto the floor. We're not trying to go as far as we possibly can. So it's more that we're feeling we're coming into a little, almost like a sort of little rounded up cat. Now, what I'd like you to do now is to alternate three times between doing a bridge pose and then coming into your little mini sit up. And you're gonna finish with a bridge pose. So it might actually mean that you do four bridge poses and three little mini sit ups in between. So come into a bridge pose, alternate by doing your little mini sit up. Remember in the mini sit up to tilt your pelvis towards your head. So the middle of your back presses onto the floor, that's it. So we've got this sort of curving of the spine. Good. And then when you come into bridge pose, that's it. It's a slightly different feeling of opening through the front of the hip joints. And perhaps we're starting to move into some of those vertebrae in the upper back. Obviously when you come back, when you're doing your bridge pose, have your arms in a comfortable place. They can be on the floor beside your head, but you know, I might, I would probably bring them onto the floor beside me. I know it's a bit of a fiddle, um, but you want to think about your arms just being as relaxed as possible. Okay, so are we probably getting to, I would have thought maybe our last pair. So we're doing one mini sit up, one bridge pose and finishing on a bridge pose. So we would do this three times and it probably means you do a fourth bridge pose. You see how that feels. Francis, I don't know whether your feet need to come in slightly. Yeah, just look, sometimes when we go up into bridge pose, you know, we move away from our feet. So one last bridge pose, just having a couple of breaths there, feeling planted in your feet, so adjusting them if you need to. And then when you come down from that bridge pose, folding your knees into your chest. And this time you can stay here a little bit longer, you can fold your knees into your chest, you can do a little bit of rocking from side to side. You can also do a bit of taking your legs up towards the ceiling, giving them a bit of a shake out. And then from here, when you're ready, when you've done whatever you like on your back in terms of knees folding into you, in terms of taking legs to the ceiling, 
Then you're going to roll onto one side, have a few breaths, a couple of breaths on your side, and we're coming over into standing. We're carrying on doing some more, as I, I suppose I think of releasing things in standing. Uncover my screen. And also we're gonna be focusing a little bit on our breathing. Good. Yeah, so when you come up into standing, I think maybe just arriving. So before we do anything, let's just have a moment of feeling ourselves in standing. So that first thing I always think of in standing is looking down at the feet. And that sort of helps us make that connection with the ground. <sighs> maybe just give, giving the arms a little shake out, dropping the arms. Good. And just so this initial impression of how does it feel to be in standing? And then we're going to alternate between doing some of these sort of loose, easy swinging twists and then coming to feel our breath. So swinging your arms from side to side, letting everything move. So let your pelvis move, let your feet move. So sometimes in this, you know, we can forget our feet and leave them stuck on the ground, but we want to let them move. And if you're feeling stiff in the shoulders or in the arms, just try to let the arms be as sort of free and floaty as possible. That's nice. Couple more times to the right and to the left. Good. And then what we're going to do is settle back in standing and bring our attention to our breathing. So again, maybe start by looking at your feet, settling yourselves in standing. If it's helpful to do a little bit of swaying, you can do. Hello, May. I was just thinking about you and then you appeared. <laughs> so that's, that's very nice. So in standing, I'm oh, sorry, you've missed a bit of lying down. In standing, bring one hand onto your belly and one hand onto your chest. You can close your eyes if you like. You can continue to sway if you like. But just using that contact of your hands on your body to try and gather your attention into your breathing. And it may be that you feel your belly or your chest responding to your breath. Doesn't matter if you don't, it's still just nice to have our hands on our body. It's quite sort of settling and soothing. But it might be that you feel either the chest or the belly responding to the, the breathing by moving a little. Let's just maybe have one or two more cycles of breath here. Relaxing the jaw as much as possible. Okay, and then come back again to swinging your arms. Well, moving all of yourself into this loose, easy swinging twist. So maybe we were just alternating and standing between this sort of movement, easing out movement, and then a little that gathering our attention to our breathing. So when we're doing these big movements, our awareness is quite expansive as well. You know, we feel our body's making a sort of large shape. We're feeling that, but also probably like me, you might be feeling the air on your skin. Although actually. <laughs> You all look quite wrapped up, so there might not be that much feeling of air on your skin, possibly you, Jan. Good. Okay. And then this time we're going to, you don't, you come onto your knees, but what I want you to do is bring your hands onto your low ribs to feel your breathing. And I've got my thumb going round towards the back ribs. You don't have to do that. But um, so hands on the bottom ribs and have them there lightly. You're not squeezing yourself so hard that you can't, your ribs can't move. But then again, if it's comfortable, if it's okay for you closing your eyes and coming to feeling, can you feel these low ribs responding as you breathe? And sometimes I find that just by bringing my hands onto my low ribs, I immediately sort of take a deeper breath, a deeper inhalation. And so I can feel the ribs move. You don't have to do that. And you don't want to start feeling that you're forcing your breath. But it might just slow us down to have that feeling of the low ribs widening into our hands as we breathe in. 
and then narrowing a bit as we exhale. So sometimes I think there's naturally this slowing down of the breathing, but we don't have to. So about just one or two more cycles of breath where we're, we're seeing if we can feel this widening and narrowing of ourselves in our middle as we breathe in and out. One more cycle of breath. Okay. And then releasing our arms. And one last time, come back to that loose swinging twist. I was thinking of how interesting it is when we sort of come to focus in that breathing, our breathing in that way, hold the whole outer world retreats a bit, doesn't it? And our focus is so much more inward. And then perhaps when we come back to something more expansive like this, that again, our awareness expands outward. And we're a bit more aware of that sort of sense of ourselves in the world. Anyway, from here, we're just gonna come into a forward bend now and see how a forward bend feels. And then we're gonna be moving into a sequence. So settle your feet down side by side with a little distance between them. And then it might be nice to start by bending your knees, start by looking down and bending your knees together. Coming down, maybe resting your elbows on your thighs. It depends very much how your lower back's feeling. And then if it feels okay, you can release forwards into a forward bend and you know, notice, notice what, what presents itself to you in your body. So lovely, really letting your head go, that's good. Wherever you are, if you've got your elbows on your knees, letting your head go. And if your lower back feels a bit vulnerable, then just, yeah, don't push it, that's nice, that's nice, good. Have another breath or two there, and then come back up by sinking into your heels, roll up into standing, or walk your hands up your thighs if, you know, the lower back is feeling vulnerable. And we're going to come into a sequence from the back of our mats, sort of quite simple, I think, for the first couple of sequences. And again, our focus is very much on releasing and easing out. So bring your hands into prayer pose in front of you. Just take a moment to feel your feet on the floor, feel the contact of your hands. And then let a breath come in. And as you exhale, take your arms down and then up. You can feel long and tall here. And then we're going to start to bend the knees, gather the elbows in, roll down into a forward bend. It could be elbows on the thighs. It could be all the way into a forward bend. And from your forward bend, you're going to then be walking on into dog pose. And as we come into dog pose, that's a point at which we might start to become more aware of tightness or tension in the shoulders also the back of the legs, of course. So we can, the solution <laughs> for these things is, as you know, bending your knees, either one or both. A bit of movement in dog. And particularly if the shoulders are feeling tight, you don't need to stay there too long. From dog pose, we're going to come down onto hands and knees. And we're going to do a little bit of cat. So when you arrive on hands and knees, just settling yourselves, hands under your shoulders, knees under your hips, and then come to your cat movements on hands and knees, rounding and dipping your spine. So we, in a way, did these movements a little bit on our backs. So that may mean that when we come into cat, it might not feel as stiff as it can do sometimes. But just, yeah, a sense of how does cat feel today? And you're going to mix it up a little bit with doing some tail wagging movements, which we were doing a lot of last Wednesday. So you could do a bit of cat. You could then see how does it feel to wag your tail. So obviously imagining we have a tail and wagging it or swishing it. You could also do that by swinging your lower legs from side to side. And if you are doing the sort of swinging the legs from side to side, if you slow that down and look along the sort of side of your body, along the floor towards your foot, you can add your head in and your neck. So that's quite good if your neck is feeling a bit tight and that it would benefit from some, some movement. 
from from um from tail wagging you could just do then come back to a couple more cycles of cats because from a rounded up cat we're then going to rock back into child pose for a couple of breaths and just take the weight off the hands so hands and knees rounding your back into child into cat sorry and then with that rounded back rocking back into child pose if you prefer to be kneeling as i know a couple of you do that's absolutely fine wherever you are in child pose or kneeling just letting the shoulders soften just feeling the weight of your body settling on the ground let a breath come in let a breath leave you And then we're going to come back through dog pose and a forward bend back up into standing. So when you're ready, come back onto hands and knees, big handprints on the floor, tucking your toes under, exhale, rocking your hips back and up. And see how it feels to come into dog pose from the floor. And again, any of our little adjustments we want to make in dog, um, so just feeling that we can rest through our arms as much as possible. We can explore bending the knees individually and both together. And from dog, you've had another breath or so, you're going to be walking your hands back in towards your feet. And then in your forward bend, you can see how that feels for a moment, and then touch the back of your hands together rolling up into standing touching the back of your hands together trailing your hands up the front of the body straight up to the ceiling drop your shoulders down let a breath come in and then as you exhale good hands all the way down into prayer good and you can have a little shake out and come towards the middle of your mat because we're just going to do a few little balancing things now we're going to do the the ones where we come up onto the balls of our feet which we haven't done for a while so I'd like you just to start off with that movement and see how does that feel? How does it feel to rock your weight forwards onto the balls of your feet, let your heels come up? And of course you can, if this starts to make you feel very wobbly, you can come and put your fingertips on a wall or that's it, a mantelpiece. Or you can even face the wall, but that might feel like a punishment. So a couple more times, just in and out of this movement. How does it feel like me? Hoping you can't hear it on Zoom, but um, I get little clicks in my feet every time I do this. Good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go up. We're going to sort of see if we can stay up and we'll take the arms up and then we'll do a variation in a moment. So when you're ready, you can bring your weight forwards onto the balls of your feet. See if you can settle in that little balance and then exactly take the arms sort of up by your sides and then let your shoulders drop down. Keep your palms, centers of your palms soft. Good, just have a couple of breaths there. Feel quiet through the front of the body. And if you're not sure whether you're quiet through the front of your body, you could bring Say so balancing, you can sort of bring your hands down onto your front ribs and just see if that part of yourself is, is quiet. Good. Very nice. And then you can come back down. Ah, and when you come back down, I meant to do this in between the other ones, but I didn't. Come back down, then just come onto the top of each foot in turn and perhaps do this a couple of times. It's almost like a little mini balance in itself, but it just stretches out the front of our ankles and yes yeah, Sally that after your long walk yesterday that'll probably be quite good okay we're going to do the same balance again but what we're going to do this time is once you're up balancing on the balls of your feet and you've taken your arms up you're then going to touch your thumb and index finger together um, you could touch the thumb onto a different finger but do the same one in each hand you can touch the pad of the finger or the nail of the finger um yeah or anywhere else you like to touch but just the same in each hand otherwise it's for me anyway it's too much for my brain to contend with so what i'd like you to do from here is then start to bring your weight back onto the balls of your feet try and keep wide across the balls of the feet 
establish yourself or settle yourself in that balance and then let the arms float up and then see how it feels touching the thumb to the pad of one of the fingers or the nail of the finger same finger in each hand this gives us this little point of focus and then let the arms come to shoulder height and let a breath come. Yeah, that's it. Placing the palms upwards, touching the thumb, touching the finger. I'm sorry, there's someone at the door. I'm going to have to. You can have another couple of breaths here. You can bring your wrists to cross in front of your chest. I'm just going to speak out the window, see if you can keep balancing. I'm teaching. I'm going to teach my yoga class. So, oh, yeah. yeah, I'll be done by half ten. I thought you were text about that. Yeah, okay, wonderful. Thank you. Sorry about that. It's the builder from next door. So, yes, very nice if you're still balancing in with your mudra, <laughs> with your wrists crossed, good, at your chest. Lovely. Come down, have a little shake out. And once more, come onto the tops of your feet and stretching out the front of your ankle. Good. We'll do this a couple of times on each side. And then we're going to come back down through our sequence again. And yes. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll, get, we'll continue to alternate between our sequence and a bit more balancing. So come towards the back of your mat and bring your hands into prayer pose once more. So letting a breath come in as you exhale, take your arms down and then up, feel long and tall here, and then gathering your elbows in, bending your knees, rolling down to a forward bend. Give yourself a breath or two here to let yourself experience the forward bend. How does it feel in your body now? And then from your forward bend, big handprints on the floor, walking your hands forwards into dog pose. That's very nice, good. And having two or three cycles of breath, whatever you like in dog pose. You don't need to stay there particularly long, but if you're enjoying it, then why not have an extra breath or so. And from dog pose once more, we'll be coming onto hands and knees and we'll be doing some cat, we'll be doing some tail wagging and you can sort of mix those up. And in terms of just being led by what feels good in your body. So you can do, you know, I, I tend to like to start with a bit of cat, see how that feels. Come on then, it's sort of pausing in the neutral, come on to a bit of tail wagging. If you then feel it would be helpful to come onto the variation where you swing your lower legs from side to side, you can do. You can come back to a bit more, a bit more, a uh, bit more cat. And once more from your rounded up cat, we will move back into child pose for a couple of breaths. So rounding your back to the ceiling, rocking your hips back over your heels. So child pose or kneeling. If you're in child pose, and last week we were doing that sort of wriggling of our pelvis from side to side in child. And if that was helpful for you or you liked that, you're very welcome to do that again. Um, it's but equally, if what's helpful for you is just to sort of be still and quiet, either in child pose or kneeling, you can do that. Let the breath come in, let the breath leave you. And then once more, we'll come back into dog pose, we'll come back through a forward bend, we'll roll up into standing. So big handprints on the floor, that's it. Tucking your toes under, rocking your hips up and back into dog. And just each time we come into dog pose, noticing how it feels, giving ourselves time to settle into dog and time to feel ourselves in dog. No rush, but whenever you're ready, walking your hands in towards your feet. And really arrive in that forward bend with all of your weight in your footprints, particularly in your heels. 
And then as you exhale, touch the backs of your hands together, roll up into standing, trail your hands up to the front of your body, up to the ceiling. Let a breath come in and then exhaling, arms out in that big circle. We're going to do just do a very sort of simple little balance and then go back and do a couple of variations in the sequence before we do a bit more balancing. So look down at your feet, just settling your feet a little distance apart and parallel. And then starting to do a bit of swaying from side to side. And closing your eyes, if you like, let your arms hang. And as we're swaying from side to side we're just going to see how it feels to bring the weight over one leg and foot and the weight over the other leg and foot so we're moving on now to our sort of one leg standing balances we're just going to do a very simple one so you at this point you're going to choose which foot you're going to stand on first you're going to open your eyes now and you're going to shift your weight onto your chosen standing foot and then bring the other foot to stand on top of that foot and you can then bring your hands into prayer pose at your heart. I'm resting my thumb on my breastbone. I'm just letting the shoulders soften and settle. And when you arrive in this little, little balance, notice what presents itself to you in your field of awareness. So where is your attention drawn? So it could be to your foot on the floor, particularly if like me, your foot's a bit wobbly. Or it might be somewhere else. If your shoulders are feeling a bit tight today, you might notice your shoulders and then you could just encourage them to sort of soften and settle and drop. Or it might be you notice your face, your jaw, and again, you could sort of soften and relax there. Good. Good. Okay. It might be good to stay there forever, but I think we'll... <laughs> We'll come down, we'll have a little shake out and we'll just try the other side. So you can again look down at your feet, you know which foot you're going to stand on now, but you still might want to do a little bit of swaying and then eventually bringing your foot, you know, your weight onto that second foot and then onto the ball of the foot you just stood on, standing that foot on top of the foot you're going to stand on and hands to prayer. And then just again, you know, what, what do you feel as you settle in this balance or try your best to settle in this balance? Where is your attention drawn to? And as well as noticing where your attention is drawn to, we have that intention of sort of softening, settling, Perhaps connecting with the flow of our breath. Very nice. So let's come down, let's have a little shake out. Let's come back to the back of our mat and Coming back into our sequence, but with a little, yeah, a couple, couple of different things yeah, in it. So hands in prayer pose, letting a breath come in as we exhale, taking the arms down and then up, feeling long and tall, and then bending the knees a little bit, gathering the elbows in, rolling down into your forward bend. Again, give yourself a breath or two in your forward bend to arrive in the forward bend. And then big handprints walking on into dog pose. And two or three cycles of breath in dog pose. Hopefully, perhaps dog is feeling a little bit more, so say, integrated now, perhaps a bit more enjoyable. And from dog pose, we'll bring our knees down onto the ground, but we're not immediately going on into cat and tail wagging. We're going to do this one where we step one foot forwards. So we're going to come into this little twist here. So just in this position, you're not in a lunge yet. You've got your front knee over your front heel, 
like in lunge, but your back knee is under your pelvis. Like you can make sure that knee is comfortable. And then we turn towards this front leg. I think you all know this one. Letting the shoulders drop, trying to feel as steady as possible from the waist down. It's not always, actually, we all look pretty steady. The more, I think the more we do this one, the more we can feel steady in this. So this rotation, the shoulders moving, feeling the rotation in the rib cage, giving away the back of the arm, the back arm, or resting it on the back of the pelvis. I'm just feeling wide across the front of the chest as we breathe in. Shoulders softening as we exhale. And then from here, we'll untwist, we'll fold forwards over the front leg and move on into lunge. So you want to tuck your back toes under and then you sort of step your knee back. And so we arrive into lunge. So we're thinking a little bit now about opening out through the front of the back leg thigh. So give yourself some time, some breaths in lunge. Enjoying, enjoying if possible that feeling of opening, lengthening through the front of the back leg, thigh. It's helpful to be in touch with our breathing here. Just so we really that we don't feel we're holding our breath. You can have another breath or so in lunge. Whenever you feel you want to come out, you can ease back out by untucking that back toe, rocking your weight. Back. So looking back behind you, coming perhaps onto the heel of the front foot, easing out of lunge. And then we'll do that with the other foot forward. So we'll come into that little, that twist first of all. So either from hands and knees or an up kneeling, stepping one foot forwards, organizing yourself. So we've still got that, that little sideways distance between yeah, our foot and our knee. Settling ourselves from the waist down, back knee under the pelvis. As we exhale, turning towards the front leg. So be that's it, be upright, good. Turning towards the front leg. You can rest that one hand on the front leg, the other hand on the back of the pelvis, or let it hang. So in, in our rotation, in this twisting movement, perhaps the focuses are the shoulders softening. And maybe that we're feeling, perhaps we're undoing a bit of tightness between the shoulder blades. And at the same time, we're feeling wide across the front of the chest. Also perhaps a little bit of, we're trying to steady ourselves here, but the balance will all look pretty steady, good. And then from here, untwisting, folding forwards over that front leg, and then walking the back leg into lunge and giving ourselves some breaths in lunge. If it's helpful to have a sort of exaggerated sighing breath here, you can do, or it's maybe just being aware of the flow of your breath through you, making sure that you're allowing the breath to flow in and out through your nostrils. You're not holding your breath, waiting for lunge to be over. Another breath or two in lunge, and then we'll, we'll ease back out of lunge, untucking the back toes, rocking back, keeping the chest close to the thigh. Good. So we're then going to come back to hands and knees. We're going to come back to a little bit of cat and we're going to take this cat on into face up dog. So you, come, you can come back onto hands and knees. You could for a few cycles of breath just remind yourself of your cat movements. And then we'll see how it feels to take cats on into face up dog. So you can tuck your toes under, you can round your back to the ceiling and then stay rounded, rock your hips back over your heels. And at that point then, you're probably gonna to want to slide your hands a little bit further forwards on the floor. And then on the exhalation, you can start to travel forwards into face up dog, rounding your back. Traveling forwards, 
when your shoulders come over your hands and of course untucking the toes, bringing your gaze forwards, letting your pelvis go. We'll repeat that a couple more times. So you can reverse the movement, start to move back, start to tuck your toes under, start to round your back, all the way back. Let a breath come in once you're back there and traveling forwards on the out breath. I always think it's most helpful. Looking back at your pelvis. So we keep that rounded back as we go into face up dog. You can do that once more if you like. So again, see if you can reverse the movement in your body. I just think that always feels quite um, quite enjoyable, quite satisfying. So all the way back, toes tucked under, breathing in and then using the out breath to take you forwards into face up dog. Once you arrive in face up dog, you could have a cup, you know, you could feel in breath move through you. From this face up dog, we'll come back into child pose for a breath or two, and then we'll just do a little bit of tail wagging, take that into face up dog as well. So come back into child or kneeling, just let yourself settle down quietly, take the weight off your arms. Let your shoulders settle and soften. Let your wrists have a little, yeah, relaxing moment. And then when you're ready, you can come onto hands and knees. And it probably at this point, if we make it a longer hands and knees, and you can, yeah, you can start to do a little bit of tail wagging. You can start to wag your tail back into child pose. We did these ones last week and you can start to wag your tail forwards into face up dog and yeah so these movements are nice for that easing out if you don't feel that you want to do particularly much, that much face up dog you could focus more on the tail wagging back into child pose and this side to side movement that sort of um sneaks us sneaks us into face up dog yeah into child so again perhaps you know if you want to do three face up dogs and then come back into child end up in child or kneeling for a couple of breaths good that's nice very nice lovely so when you if you're in if you arrive in face up dog just always that feeling of the shoulders soft down away from the ears we might feel the breath come in wide in the front of the chest that's nice so that's it so coming into kneeling or child pose for a quiet breath or two and then in a moment we'll make our way back up into standing and we'll come back to a couple of balancing poses So when you feel ready, you can come back onto hands and knees, get ready to move into dog pose. So big hand prints on the floor, tucking the toes under, rocking your hips back and then up <sighs> into dog pose. And you could be enjoying that dog pose. I should say it because I might be wrong. I think this might be on the last dog pose. Day, so it might be that you, if it feels good, you enjoy that for an extra breath or two. And then obviously from dog pose on into a forward bend. And again, maybe enjoying that forward bend, but I think there might be another forward bend. And from your forward bend, sinking into your heels, touching the backs of your hands together, rolling up into stand good and let's have a little shake out yeah just give yourself a little shake out and then come to stand with your feet side by side on your mat and just have a little bit of space in front of you because we're going to step one foot forwards so step one foot forwards you can come to rocking your way forwards and back and I think we might have done this balance last Wednesday, if my memory is right. But we're going to do a couple of different variations of this. So 
in a moment from rocking forwards and back, we're going to bring the front leg hand onto the breastbone and we're going to bring all of our weight into our front foot and then we're going to catch the back foot or the trouser leg and come to this place. And then from here, you're going to move on by reaching your hand forwards and your foot back away from your bottom. And just seeing where you come to. And when you reach, that's it, reach the foot back. Might be that you topple over and that's fine. It might be you come to a place where you can have a couple of breaths. This is quite a sort of expansive balance. Good. That's nice. And we can come back down. And that's it. Can see. And yes, between sides, I think just if you can step your back foot back to where it was, between sides will fold down into a forward bend like this with one foot stepped forward. So you can bend that front knee and you can come to rest either onto that bent front leg or rest your body down over that front leg. And just have a breath or two there in that sort of forward bend. Keep one anchored through your back heel. And then you can sink into both footprints, if you the heels come back up into standing and give you a nice little shake out. We'll try that balance on the other side. So you're going to be stepping your other foot forwards and you're going to come to this rocking your weight forwards and back. So make sure if you've got that little distance, sideways distance between your feet. And so, as I was probably saying last week, this sort of rocking forwards and back is just quite settling. So sort of, it's that opportunity to drop down into our feet, to let our minds sort of quiet and, and take the back seat. And then eventually, if we bring our hand onto our breastbone, the front leg hand onto the breastbone, we can shift all of our weight into our front foot, catch the back foot or the trouser leg, maybe just be upright here for a cycle of breath. And then exploring that reaching forwards with our arm and reaching back behind us with the foot that we've caught and noticing how this feels. And it's going to be quite a strong movement for the shoulder that's catching the back foot. So that might be something that you notice. And then really, if you can, connecting with your breath, having a couple of cycles of breath, good. That, that rain might be here, Jan. <laughs> My last roof. <coughs> yes, coming down. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try that same balance with the mudra. So we're going to be touching the thumb and finger together, or it could be the thumb onto the pad of the finger. Um, could be any finger. I tend to always do the index finger and just see how how it affects the quality of the balance. Oh, sorry, we need to do our forward bend on this side. So just before we come to repeat the balance, the foot that you just stood on forwards, bending that knee, folding down, unless you've already, you probably know what you're doing and you've already done that, coming into your forward bend, just for a quiet moment or two. We're very distracted by the prospect of rain. And then sinking into your heels, coming back up into standing. So we'll start with the stepping foot feet side by five side, stepping the first foot forwards. Just have your arms heavy and relaxed to start with, and a little bit more of this toing and froing, shifting the weight forwards and back. This time, when you bring your hand on your breastbone, you're going to touch the thumb and finger together in the mudra and rest your hand on the breastbone with your, your hand in that mudra. And then let the weight come into the front foot, catch the back foot. And then when you bring your hand forwards, you can turn your palm up towards the ceiling. So again, reaching back with your foot and just seeing how that, that contact of thumb and finger, does it have an impact on the quality of the balance? 
perhaps I often find it just it just helps my mind to be a little bit more focused. Good. Of course we can, yes, yeah, it's very nice. We can come back down. And give you a little shake out. We can try the same, we'll try the same thing on the other side, and then we're going to just a, a normal forward bend. So um, coming back down, feet side by side, stepping the other foot forwards, a little bit of the most important thing, <laughs> shifting our weight forwards and back, dropping down into our feet and then touching the thumb and the index finger. So it could be the thumb to the pad of the finger. You can even bring your finger sort of lower down onto the base of your thumb. Um, these are all possibilities. But just, I suppose whatever feels, whatever you feel drawn to. You can always play around with that point when you're in the balance, if it doesn't make you fall over. So we've got our hands on our breastbone. We're going to shift our weight into our front foot. We're going to catch the top of the back foot. We're going to have a moment in the balance, just being upright. And then we can start to reach our foot back behind us, reach our arm forwards. Turn our palms upwards. So this mudra has this sort of, it's a bit like we're offering something, we're making an offering. And then, yeah, how does it feel to be here? How does it feel to have that point of contact of the mudra? Impact does that have on our balance? If we're feeling very steady, we can you know, also explore sort of changing how the finger is contacting the thumb. Nice, and then, <laughs> Well done, everyone. That's it, Francis. So see if you can move your foot back a little bit. I look very nice. Well done. Good. Have a little shake out. We're just going to come into one last completely normal, ordinary forward bend, and then we'll get to lie down. So, which may you'll be very pleased about, given you missed the lie down at the beginning. So, folding forward to the forward bend, letting the head go, letting the arms go. We've had a couple of breaths in the forward bend. I, I just remembered actually, I just wanted to do a very brief little revisit of breathing in standing. So if once you've rolled up from your forward bend, if you can, if you can bear it, you're going to choose between. So if we're back at the beginning, we did breathing with one hand on the belly, one hand on the chest, and with the hands on the low ribs. So I'd like you to choose one of those just to settle in for a couple of breaths in standing. Um, yeah, whichever one you feel drawn to. So either both hands on the low ribs or one hand on the belly, one hand on the chest. And closing your eyes if you like, just gathering your attention inward. You might like to sway a little bit from side to side. And then again, can we feel our body responding to our breathing? feeling of widening, of filling with our inhalation, and that feeling of emptying, narrowing with our out breath. Okay, maybe one more cycle of breath. Feeling the breath come in, feeling the breath leave you. And then yes, indeed, you are going to lie down. So settle down onto your backs. We're gonna do a few movements here. Um, I'm aware that even though the builder didn't seem to realize I was teaching yoga at all, they have been quiet during this class and they were noisy before. So yeah, if it all gets noisy, I will finish up. So yes, arrive on your back and just arrive. And it might be like, oh, I'm on my back. So just arrive on your back and feel yourselves. And I'm going to suggest a few little movements in a moment. But first of all, if there's anything you feel drawn to doing, aside from just lying there 
and settling. Yeah, then do you feel that you can do that? And maybe bring your hands onto the front of your body and just however you have them. It could be the low ribs, it could be the belly, it could be the chest and the belly. And just again, come back to feeling the movement of the breath in the body. And when we're lying down, we're obviously at our most relaxed. So that's when we might feel the most movement in response to the breathing, the most movement of the body. So noticing what you feel here, you might feel more than you did in standing. And then you keeping your hands on your body, if you like, you could come to feeling the contact of your head on the floor letting the shoulders rest back and come to letting your head roll a little bit to the right and a little bit to the left so that easing of your head from side to side And yes, Mel, that is a good idea. You could, if your leg, if you could bend your knees, stand your feet on the floor, you can come to a little bit of tilting of your knees from side to side. And then if you pause in the middle, you can take your feet a bit wider apart, take them as wide as the narrow edge of your mat. And then start to let your knees tilt from side to side in this, with the feet in this position, that's it. It starts to move us a little bit more into the hip joints. So you could carry on going from side to side, but you could also, if you like, take your knees all the way down to one side and leave them there. You might find you need to slide a cushion under one of them. You can take your knees all the way down to one side and then let your head roll in the opposite direction to the knees and just focus on that shoulder staying sort of heavy and settled on the ground. Good. And you can have a couple of cycles of breath there. Hold more if you like. You might want to come back to a little bit of tilting your knees from side to side and then taking your knees down to the other side for a few cycles of breath. So Yes, on side two of this little twist, you can have your knees going down to the other side and you let your head roll in the opposite direction to your knees. And have two or three cycles of breath there. And then it might be that you want to come back to the center, fold your knees into your chest and a little bit of rocking from side to side with your knees folded into your chest or like Mel was doing a moment ago you could take your legs up to the ceiling give them a shake out and we're going to settle down quietly on our backs Blankets, yes, good idea. I thought we might just finish with a bit of that one where we palm our eyes. So once you're settled, we can rub the hands together until they're warm and then bring our palms over our eyes. So if like me, sometimes that takes, that takes quite a bit of doing. So rubbing the hands together until they're warm. 
And then the palms come over the eyes. We've got the sort of base of the palms resting on the, the cheekbone, on the sort of bone beneath the eyes and the fingers on the forehead. And you just have a few quiet breaths here if you like. You can let your head roll a little bit to the right and to the left. Just enjoying that opportunity of the eyes being bathed in the darkness. And you know, if you find you're doing a lot of computer work at the moment, driving, reading, this can be helpful. So we're just going to lie quietly for another minute or so. So you could keep your palms over your eyes or rest your hands on the front of your body or on the ground beside you. And you can keep your knees bent or lengthen your legs out. And just letting, allowing yourself this little bit of time to lie quietly. We can have that inner focus of feeling the movement of the breath within us. And we can also be aware of the outer world, the air on our skin, sounds, the ground. So thank you very much, everyone. You don't need to move. You can carry it if you've got the time. Thank you. Thanks, Rosie. Ah, yes, if you've got the time, you can carry on lying down. There's no need to, to get up. Thanks very much. That was lovely. Thank you. See you, I'll see you next week. Lovely to see you. I'm, I'm going to end this because I'm very aware that the builders may start banging any minute to making it completely unrelaxing. So.